Um, how's everyone going? Well, welcome to our brand new format. This mm -hmm. is the Ken's Beautiful Crazy Life. We have a schedule for the entire month, and today is our first video. Now, as the name implies, it is a beautiful but crazy life, and today I forgot we had taxes, which started at two, and we just now finished it, but staying true to my word, we're going down schedule. I told you guys it could be early in the morning, it could be afternoon, but the replay will always be available. So, welcome. Um, now it is saying I have nobody on YouTube, so give us a little sec here. All right, so hopefully you guys can see us. It's been having technology. YouTube's all new how we have to live stream, and I don't, I'm not a big fan of it. So, <laughs> um, hey, so a hey. couple uh, quick things, and we're going to dive right into it. This segment is called the Ken's Reviews. Uh, we'll throw the thumbnail back up again. This is going to be a series of videos where we take a first look at a new product and we review it. Um, so these will typically be on a Monday. Uh, Tuesdays are going to be typically a cooking show, uh, but we do have the schedule posted on our Facebook page uh, on Wednesday. I will update that as well for you. So uh, this is a first look. So this machine, uh, the reason we're reviewing this machine is there has been a whole new focus on laser cutters. And you guys know we have our Glowforge. We love our Glowforge. We actually have two of them. Mm -hmm. But I've often said the company that comes out with a home-based uh, smaller machine will be the first to really win the war, in my opinion. And uh, this company, Smart DIYs, started actually an Indiegogo campaign to fund this project and now that it's up and running you can buy it directly on their site but we have a video we will show you this video will show you a quick look of what this machine can do and how they introduced it to the world so let's take a look at that So that was the campaign. Now, whenever a company launches a campaign on anything like Kickstarter or uh, Indiegogo, uh, the video they show is kind of their test model or their concept. Um, so it does look a little bit different, but you can see the compact size. You can see that it is able to run software or you can use the app. Um, we just recently took this out. So I'm first gonna show you everything in the box and then we will also show you um, how easy it was to set up. Literally inside the box, it is, we'll go down here, it is just this. We got our Etcher Laser Startup Guide and it gives you a little code to follow the directions. It also gives you the packing list and just some in, uh, warranty information. They also send you a little test piece of wood that already has your name, enjoy your Etcher Laser, and we also, you can see, have been practicing on this. Also in the kit that we got, uh, there is a pair of safety goggles, which are red. Makes everything Everything red. very red. <laughs> you also have the laser itself. Now, a couple things on this guy is you do not 
you want to avoid touching the laser, which is right in here. So we're going to show you how to install this. This is a little bit different than what you've typically seen. We'll explain the differences here in a sec. They also give you a manual measuring tool. We'll explain that in a sec. They give you some replacement QR codes, and these are very important. Once again, we'll explain that to you as well. And they give you a replacement screw just in case you lose the screw on the laser. Now, outside of this, there is also, of course, the USB cable to hook it up into a computer. And then also the power cable, which is a two-piece typical power cable. You have this, and then this plugs in here, and this will end up plugging into the back of the machine. Now, before we dive in deep and show you all of this machine and the pros and cons, I'm going to open this up. Now, this is very orange. This is protective, so this way, laser, but it does just come up like so. And because we can't lift it up higher than this, we do have, we'll get a, a camera view in here for you. Um, so you can see right out of the gate, it is a lot smaller of a footprint than our Glowforge. And this is great for people that want a smaller machines. Um, and it is very easy to use in what we have used it for. So let's go ahead and get a camera up here so you guys can see it. And we'll get in here on these tight little angles and show you. All right, so here is the machine on the inside. So a couple things, these are for shipping. So we're gonna take all of these off. You have a delay, just to let you know. Mm -hmm. It's really jumpy. We, I know the it's not the best video right now as we get here, so if it's a little jumpy, that's why. So, but make sure you keep all of these pieces because if you ever have to send this back, you're gonna want to make sure to put this back inside here. A couple things I want to show is these are those little QR codes, which oh. are important. So they give you extras just in case you accidentally hit this or it comes off. You can easily replace it. All right, so. Let's go ahead and first uh, show you how some stuff connects. So this is the actual laser. And um, your quality is really bad. Sorry. It's because of Wi-Fi. It's um, Wi I think we can actually go to this view now and show them. All right. So this here is the actual laser. Now, we'll get picture in picture for you guys so we can see you guys while we talk. Because I want to explain the key differences out of the box I noticed. So I want to make sure you guys know this machine is a difference of uh, the wattage and how much you're going to spend. So let me share my desktop and show you what I mean by that. So let's go to their website and screen share down here. All right. So this is the website for Smart DIY. And when you come up to the product and go to Etcher Laser, and hit buy now, you have a couple different options. You have a 1.6 watt and a 3.5 watt. Can you explain what the difference is, Sean? Obviously, the bigger the number, the more power there is going to be outputting into the laser head itself. So this one that we got, uh, that they gave us, was a 3.5. Our Glowforge, the basic is 40, and the Pro and the Plus are 40. Five watts, so you can tell there's a big difference in wattage. Yeah, so the reason why I wanted to point this out is this is definitely, um, I think, targeted towards a different audience than the Glowforge. Um, and the lead, this wattage is really important. So there is a 1.6 and there's a 3.5 watt. There is also a company, or a, they have a laser mini, which is called the Fabul. I think it's that. Um, and this actually sits just on your desktop. And this is for really quick projects and stuff like that. Um, so the one that they gave us for a review is the Etcher Laser. Now, um, let me go back to us. So I just wanted to uh, make sure you guys know they did give us this to review it. But that does not impact our review or our first thoughts on the machine. So just for comparison, this, if you were to get the 3.5 watt, is right around $1,100. The Glowforge for the basic is $2,500. So it is $1,000 more. It is a much bigger machine, um, but it is a little bit more intuitive when it comes to measuring thickness. And we'll show you that here in a second. Now that you've seen kind of the difference of the wattage, that's really important to know. Let's show you how easy this machine is to hook up. So we'll go down to this camera. I'm going to turn it a little bit so you can see a little better in there. 
Okay, so first and foremost is this guy here. This is where your laser arm is going to go. Now the big difference on this is this is all manually adjusted. And this is a huge difference between this and the Glowforge. The Glowforge itself is going to measure the thickness of your wood um, and it is going to move up and down as it needs to, where this is all manual. Meaning when you measure your piece of material, you're actually going to adjust it. So the big thing is, is hooking it in for the first time, they have these two little lug nuts on each side that you're gonna unscrew, and it will actually just slide into this column right here. And then you can, of course, move it up and down and screw it down to stay in place. So this, in my opinion, at first I thought was like a, I, I wasn't wild about it, but it's really easy to use in the software. And so it seems way more complicated than it really is. This just plugs into this right here. And just like that, it's hooked up. Now remember, there is that laser down there. You don't want to touch that if you can. So at this point, it's hooked up. It's ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and shut this lid. Turn this around. And you don't get any paperwork with this. This is all you get, which is the manual.smartdiy.cc slash etcher laser. I'm going to switch it here really quick, mm -hmm. Sean, because when you go to this page, I'm going to pull it up. It literally walks you through the entire um, process. Now, you can scan this little code right here, and this code will take you where you need to. But in our case, we are just going to go to the website. So let's dot cc slash etcher laser. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and share my desktop here again. All right. Are they on us? Because I see this. Nope. You are. They see us. See that little one right there? That's what they're Oh, saying. perfect. Sorry. Okay. So here is basically the first page safety guidelines. Read it all. Obviously, you don't want to um, hurt yourself. But this machine is pretty easy to set up. Um, I found it a little bit easier than the Glowforge. Grant you there's not as many moving parts, but it tells you exactly what you need. Shows you the lid, the camera, the processing bed drawer, which we'll explain that in just a second. You have your power switch, AC connector, USB connector. You have an exhaust fan. You have the screws for the lasers, the positioning stickers, which is over here. Um, it gives you your light. So you have an air light, the Wi-Fi light, stop and start button. And then literally it's unpacking. So this was fairly easy. You get this one package, it comes exactly as this. It's not heavy at all. How heavy would you say it is? Maybe 20 pounds. Maybe, yeah. You have the AC cable, the AC adapter. You'll remove all the packing tape. Move all the little lug nut, red nuts, and keep those just in case anything happens. And then underneath of it, you'll have the height adjustment jig, the laser head, protective glasses, and this is where they're going to tell you, do not touch that. You can see this is where we loosen the screws. We plugged it in. All good to go. And then we are seriously going to connect it. Now, once we connect it, I will show you the software. So let's first connect this. I'm going to go ahead and go back up to this camera. Sean, I'll let you do that. I'll do this a bit better. Let's see, we're going to do that. You know it's still on the desktop, right? Uh, Until you share us again. We're actually up there. Okay. And then you're going to come gonna down do, here. Then we're going to do that. Sweet. All right. So down here, you have the cable that's going to go to your computer. You have Oops, the uh, power and then the this, power which switch. is the power switch. So we're going to plug this in, which is going to be the power. And this is going to get plugged into here. And just like that, we are plugged in. It is really that simple. So once we are plugged in, we're ready to turn it on and we should have power. So at this point, all we're doing is the power portion. Let me go ahead and go up here. We'll show you. Um, you want to see us or that? I want to see that. Okay. So when you turn it on, you'll see the light comes on. Now this is this orange from the glow. If you were to open this, 
it's a typical pretty bright light in here. In fact, let me turn off our lights so you can see how bright this is. Yeah, just a, there are a couple rows of LED lights from here to here. So it is very bright. Yeah, go ahead and lift it up so that you can see the lights spill out of that. You can see how bright. All right. So that's how bright the machine is. We're going to turn it off for now. And I'm going to go back to sharing my desktop for you guys so you can see the rest of this setup process. Sean will go ahead and turn that off for me. All right, so once again, you're just going to follow through all of the prompts. So we're just going to hit next. The next thing it's going to have you do is download the software. Now, this software is either can be accessed on, um, here we go. So this software can be either utilized on a Mac, a PC, or there is an app on the phone. Um, and the nice thing is, is they all look alike. It's not a different application. So what you see on the desktop is truly what you're going to see on the app. But I do recommend doing the desktop one first. So you're really going to just follow their instructions on downloading it. And I actually do not have it installed on here because I wanted to show you guys how easy. So here is the link that will take you to download the software. You literally just hit click here to download. I have a Mac. You, If you have a Windows, that's great. But I'm just going to do the Mac. Now this will download something onto your computer. So it is important to know that this is a, it's not um, like somewhere you are accessing their uh, software using online. You can use this offline. So we're just gonna open this. It's going to open it. And the software is very easy to use. Um, it's just a little bit different to know your, your steps. So we're gonna open it, we're gonna have it. And I'm going to double check it. All right. So just like that, we are, there's our software. It's that easy. But before we do anything else, we want to go back over here and double check make sure everything worked um, because the next page it is going to run you through how to do your first cuts which is really important because we learned a lot so you want to go ahead and hit this next and this is where you're really going to do kind of that first cut so i'm going to let sean take over that for a quick sec here and go back up to us so we can explain the big difference here so the big difference that I want you guys to understand is the measure of thickness. Just a sec here while we get back to us. Come on, doesn't want to go. Hold on. Awesome. Okay, so um, can you minimize that so we can yep. see us? Thank you. So in your box will be this happy little thing here. So let's go to this camera. Mm -hmm. So this is your height measurement jig. This is actually very important. So when you do this, because you are doing the manual setting and they'll walk you through this, this is how you will set the laser height. Now, in my opinion, this is the biggest complaint I have about the machine. It is not a long process. It is not complicated. It is actually very easy, but I'm so used to uh, other machines measuring it for me. And I could see that this would be the only technical issue people could run into because if you don't get your height just right or if your uh, laser is a little cockeyed it can give you issues so we're going to show you because the software is going to walk us through let's go back to the manual and show people what it's telling us to do next so we can do it as if they're opening the machine for the first time as well so here it is it's going to have you actually connect your power which we've already done and this first time we are going to connect it directly into our computer. So it's simple. It's just like a printer cable like any of our other machines on the market are. So you're going to plug it in the back. Just a sec here. Sean's going to get it to where you guys can see it. So we're going to plug it in right here. And then this just goes into the back of the computer. All right, so let's go back to our computer screen. 
So I highly recommend going through this whole setup process because it's going to tell you. So once we launch the software and place the material, it's going to have us do some user settings. So I'm going to turn the machine on and it may not have us do this because we've already done it, but we'll, we'll see here. So go ahead and go into the software now. So right here, it's going to be open settings and we're going to hit open settings. And this is where it's going to basically say, what machine do you have? And we're going to say that we have the Etcher laser, and then we're going to change it to the 3.5 watts. So this basically is setting up the software to say, this is the machine you're working. We can hit OK and go ahead and hit Next. And it's going to basically walk you through the desktop. So you have the, of course, connect your machine. So anytime you see this green right here, this lets you know that the machine is connected and ready to go. Then this is going to walk you through a quick overview. And this is a pretty easy system um, to use. There is some caveats, which we'll talk about, but the add item is when you're going to add your item. This is your item, then you can resize it. This will be your uh, laser perimeters, which we'll talk about, and then start. So this basically just gives you kind of an overview. So let me show you the software. So basically you have in here that it's connected. You have your workspace that you can zoom in and out of. You have all of this, which is your pan, your zoom, your preview, copy, paste, delete, undo, redo, camera, which is very important. We'll talk about that in a second. But over here are the big ones that you're not going to see in other people's software. So the big difference on this, and I can probably have Sean take over um, for uh, us for a little bit so I can explain mm -hmm. and then he can kind of go through the motions with us. So the big difference, the big difference on this machine compared to the Glowforge, the Glowforge is pretty automated. So when it comes to designing, you can use SVGs and PNGs and everything, but the big difference is the Glowforge is doing all the measurement for you. It is all automatic where this is not. So in order to do on the Glowforge, for example, you put the material in, you close the lid and it's going to take a photo. It's going to make sure that everything's within its boundaries and stuff. This is a little bit more work on our end. So because of that, we have some extra steps. So let's go back to the software and I'll tell you guys here. All right, so the big difference you're going to see in this software versus, for example, the Glowforge is up top where it says origin, position, area, and stop. And what are those, what, are, what do those do, Sean? Origin basically is going to be your exact, what is called the home for the laser head to be so in. can you go to this camera view so we can show them so origin is this guy right here so you want Oops, this sorry. oh we're completely at something else just oh, one wow. sec everyone sorry about okay. that there we go so the origin is basically will always take you back to square one so if we were to press the origin button you're going to see the laser move back to its origin okay there you go. The position button is basically when you want to position the laser. So we'll show you that in one second. There's also an area and a stop. So let's go back to the manual so we can make sense of all of this. So I cannot stress this enough. You want to bring the manual up for me again to follow the manual. So let's go ahead and scroll down. So this is where it's really important, and I'm like you all, I like to just get going right out of the way, but this is important. So when the Etcher laser and your computer are properly connected, the Seth 4 will show connected on the top left side of the screen. Click the origin on the top of the screen and the laser head will move to the origin top left in the work area. Default positioning before it starts. So anytime you start a cut, you're going to want to hit that origin so it always goes back here. So now what we're going to do is we're able to place our material. We're just using a medium bass wood. Very light wood. Light weight wood. Yeah. So we're going to, are you on us or I, where are we at? Uh, we're still on this. Hold on. Okay. So we're literally going to lift up our lid. And I'm going to set this in here. Now it's really important and it's hard to see, but 
there is a work area. Let me lift it up for you. So this is the work area. So a couple things is you do not, you want your material fit in there and you also do not want to cover these registration marks. So we're gonna place our work right here and there it is in there. Now, you would normally say, oh, let's go ahead and close it so it can take a picture. That's not the case on this. So let's bring up the manual. This was our first aha moment of, okay, this is a little bit different. Let's go ahead and share our desktop. Okay, so the next thing it says is we need to click the position check button and graphic area of the software will show the image of the laser head by dragging the image to a spot you can move the laser head basically you're telling the laser where your material is so let's go into the software and we're going to move that up so you can see it and we're going to hit position you're going to see your laser head where it's in its origin spot and we're going to move it to the middle because that's kind of where our material is and now it's basically moving to where you, it's basically saying this is where you want it, right? So let's go back to the manual. The manual. Oh, sorry. It's okay. All right. So now you can see we positioned it. All right. So this is where we have to adjust the height of the laser. So unlike the Glowforge, this basically, you have to see what the height is of the laser. So I'm going to give Sean this do you want me to use this camera if you can um we no that's fine what i'm going to do is I'll, I'll tilt a little bit are you here. sure i can oh. use this camera uh if it wants to connect oh you're gonna have to go back to the wi-fi oh i that, see that's our problem it's wi-fi was is horrendous okay so i'm on wi-fi so this way they can see it a little better all right so so here's our jig okay you so, can put it down now you don't yeah. have to lift it up so you're gonna since our uh, process, uh, product is already in there, we're going to put this on this side, lay it down, and then we're going to loosen up both sides of the screws. So the way to think of this is this is the entire manual process. So any material you use, it's really important you use this tool to get it at the right height because this is going to depict on how much. Now, a couple things you saw Sean do is he use these on each side to adjust the laser but you want to also make sure it's even you don't want it to be tilted, tilted or anything yep. so once you've adjusted the height of the laser then we can move on to the next so that's why it's really important to not lose this and make sure it's nice and even so now we're going to go ahead and go back to our desktop all right so according to this, the next thing is, is to import data and check the positioning. So this is where we can add an item and I'm just gonna add um, an item from their library. You can absolutely, um, we have to go back to origin. And once you're back into origin, you can hit add item. Um, oh, we have to pick a, picture of it first don't we I want to let me add an item what did I do wrong Sean oh there we go position there we go so now we can add an item now you can select a file you can uh, upload something I'm just gonna upload something from their catalog and let's upload what shape do you want to do today Sean let's do a ghost and here's our ghost so now we can move it anywhere within the work area okay so once you have an item this is where once again it gets a little tricky so you have to basically take a picture of your material and the way you're going to do that is you're actually going to lift the cover and the camera is actually right here so once you have it open you're going to see where it allows us to take a photo so what i mean by that is if we have our lid shut the camera option goes away so you have to lift it open and what it's doing here just so you guys can see is it's going to take a picture of the material and all of these little registration marks which I know it's kind of hard to see so let me go ahead and go back and share this so we're gonna take a photo it's gonna say how high is the item we're using so we're using that base wood basswood excuse me and it is three millimeters so we're gonna make sure 
it's inputted as 3.00. Okay, and now it's going to take a picture. So it says capture failed. If you get this, it's because it wants to be back into the origin position. So hit origin and then take a photo of it. What's happening is that the head is actually covering that upper left hand registration mark and it can't see it. Yep. So it's taking a picture and you can tell because we have our piece of material. So if we zoom all the way out. So there's our material, the wood right there. There is our little guy. So once we get to this point, you can see we can move stuff in. Um, we're ready to go. So now we can actually shut the lid. So we've shut the lid. We have our red button, which means we're not ready to quite go yet. And now we are at the point where we get to do our settings. I'm going to let Sean walk through, but you are in charge of doing your settings over on here. So you click on your item. And what are all these different settings? So speed is the uh, is what it's uh, millimeters per second. So this is going to do right now. It's set at 6,000 millimeters per minute. So that's fairly fast. So the head and everything will be moving at that speed as you if you want to burn deeper because this one's going to be basically just the outline of the ghost so it's going to do it fairly flat fast and it's going to be not that deep at all it's just going to be microly placed on there it's just going to be enough to see it if you want it deeper you'd want to slow that down so it can burn a little uh, deeper into that they're on this by the way they can't see your desktop oh let me go to the desk that's okay sorry guys Sorry, we do not see questions or anything, so... For a second, yeah. For a moment, until we get back to all the stuff. Okay, so what he's explaining, basically, is there's manual, user dictation, and preset. If you go to preset, there is some presets. So there's acrylic, there's paper, there's balsa, there's veneer. So some of these may work for you. Um, there's also um, one where they actually... Let me go really quick here, Sean, to show them. There is in their manual right here smart diy and this will show you other user settings that you can use so it will tell you what is effectiveness what is the speed what is the power number dpi and it kind of breaks down everything so if you don't know what to put that on it does give you some help but what sean has found is you really the manual is the best way you can also record it so once you find a setting you like you can hit record and it will actually record it right here for you so if we like something and we record it, it will say, what is your perimeter, yada, yada. And now it's right here in our dictionary. Yep. So if you find a setting you do like, um, there's that. So let's just do the manual. And so what this one is set up for right now is going to be very quick. The power and percentage is very low. So you think 10% of 3.5 is 0.35 watts, which is very, very little. And how many times do you want it to do the pass? It's only gonna do it once. So when we push go, this will be a very thin, not very deep at all. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to where they can see this. Yep. Because all we have to do now is hit start. So we're overhead. Do you want to zoom out so they can see it or do you want to uh, zoom in on the laser? Let's see if we can zoom in. You can go back test to, so you can see it better. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shrink this down. Okay. All right, so here is the, the laser head right now is right there. So we're gonna zoom this in so you can see. All we're gonna do is we're gonna hit start on the software. So wanna let's go, go, and, yep, go share the desktop again. Okay, bring that up. And then go ahead and hit start. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna say, please do not leave the machine. All that you have adjusted, we're gonna hit start. And it's actually doing it. So go to the machine now. I think it's because the power mm -hmm. is just not enough. So this is the first thing we notice. I'm going to go ahead and open this up so you guys can see. So this is basswood. Very this light is very wood. light wood and it did nothing. And here is the thing is we're so used when we first got this and did our first cut, we're so used to the Glowforge. Mm -hmm. And the Glowforge is how many watts? The basic is 40 and the 
and the Plus and Pro is 45. 45. This is three and a half watts. This is a very, um, this machine is made for smaller projects, uh, lighter weight, and it's basically, you can do the same things, but it's just going to require either more passes or a little bit of a stronger power. Right. So the first thing we noticed right away is we were going way too uh, cautious and Sean was like, we need to give it more power. Right. So that's what the reason why if you use it the first time and you get a result like this. Which is nothing. Is nothing, right? So let's so, share the desktop and you can show them the adjustments that we made. Here's my adjustments. This is what I would say to do. So we're going to hit this. I'm going to slow it down to about 4,000. So it's not going to go as fast. I'm going to bring up the power quite a bit. I want to go... Let's go at 90%, and I think one time is fine. This okay. should give us a nice So before we song. do anything, though, we have to redo all of our steps. So we're going to hit, first and foremost, origin, which will have the laser go back. We need to put in our, and now we are going to take a picture of it. So here's our camera right here. Take a picture. We already know it's we three. Know it's three mil. And so it's going to take a photo. There it is. So now we can go ahead and close our lid. Mm -hmm. And everything else is ready. So we can hit start. And it's going to say don't walk away. And then we can show you the laser cutting. Can you go back? There you go. So now it is cutting. Let's see how it does this time. All right. Oh, voila! There's our little ghost. So, you can't even feel it. Like, it's that light. It's it, like, it just barely burned it. Yeah. So, here's the thing. Um, so, a couple things right at first was, we are so used to the Glowforge. A couple things were popped into our mind. Was number one, wow, this machine's really quiet. No. Really quiet. And number two, there was no, the Glowforge is very loud. It's and you can see it and you can see the smoke because it's got so much power. This one has a vent. And I was like, Sean, do we have to vent it out and stuff? And he goes, it's not creating enough. Um, I can smell You can smell something. a little word burn, but there's no few, like smoke or anything because it's just not you, powerful enough to do you it. You would get more smoke out of those. You remember those things, to burn wood things? You get more smoke out of that yes. than you do with this. The right, hand this and wood yeah. etch and stuff. Oh, yeah. And this is, I mean, at first... It, it it's a different change of mind. Yeah. So basically, it is. This is a lot of you're going to be inputting it stuff. Now, grant you, once you get to a setting or you can use the preset settings, it is super easy. And to be honest, the Glowforge, you have to do that too. If you don't buy their QR code stuff, you're going to have to mess around with the speed and all of that stuff. Or look for somebody who's done that material. Uh, in the past and use what they said. Correct. So before we go on and show you some more features, let's see if there's any questions. I'm going to turn it off, even though it's not very loud. It's it's loud enough to interrupt. What questions do you have before okay. we go into I the difference? Because <laughs> here's the, the other thing we found out is this well cut and this well engrave, but it's a different way of thinking of it. So for example, on a Glowforge, when you upload a file in the Glowforge and put engrave, it automatically assumes you want to engrave the whole thing. On here, you do not. It, it gives you different engraving options. So um, we'll talk about that in a second, but let's see what questions you have. All right. I went back as far as I remember seeing the first one. So the first one is, what is Do the I look like size? the Terminator? Yeah, you do. Mm -hmm. What is the work size area? So let's open this up and we'll pull out a uh, Oh my gosh, this here. is going to give me a headache. Yeah. This is very red. So the work area, it's not that big. It's not as big as the Glowforge, obviously, because the Glowforge is what... Uh, the Glowforge's work area is 19 and a half by 11. So this and is a 12 and a half wide by mm, 10 tall. So it is definitely smaller than the Glowforge. Yeah, and, there, and, and I think this was mostly made for smaller objects or smaller projects. Here's the deal. If I am grabbing... Let's say I want to cut something for a paper project. I'm making a card because you can cut paper on this. And it doesn't light on fire. Um, this is way easier to move around. There's no calibration. There's nothing like that. Because the Glowforge, if you move it, you have to recalibrate it and do it stuff. This is really made for, I think, small, quick projects. Um, and it is a little bit more... doesn't take up as much real estate. 
because the Glowforge is heavy real estate. And a little bit Glowforge yeah. could be a little bit scarier because it can start a fire. Not saying that this can't. You need maybe, to stay with it, but still. The, yeah, and we'll get um, to, there's a question about that. So that's yep, one so is keep by, going. Here comes Terrico. She says, does it cut through with like the Glowforge? It should. Now, we, like we said, we just opened this up last night just to briefly look to see how it works. We haven't done anything with it, but I did see a video and they were cutting acrylic. Just like acrylic, you can cut wood too. But the problem is, is that you have to do multiple so passes. So it's not a problem, it's a difference. It's a difference, yes. So for those of you who are my crafter friends, this will make sense to you. This reminds me of the Cricut Maker. Mm -hmm. Can the Cricut Maker cut two millimeter or TM, yeah, two millimeter basswood or balsa wood. It can, but you use the knife blade and it accomplishes it by doing multiple passes. Right. So it's in a square, it's going to do the first pass. The second pass, it's the same kind of concept. The difference with the Glowforge is because you have more wattage, you're able to put more power Three. and it can cut in one, in one pass yeah. because it is a lot more powerful. On the acrylic piece, which I, it looked like it was one in... Uh, thickness. I, I can't, I'm only guessing, and it took four passes to cut through that. Correct. So the reason why is we really wanted an out of the box experience with you guys. Um. So one thing I will say I love about this, the Glowforge. You can use it on your phone. You can use it on your iPad. And essentially, what you're doing is you're just using it Safari. It doesn't have a dedicated app. This actually does have a dedicated app. Which goes into Deb's uh, question, can this work with an iPad lab or a laptop? It can use all desktop? of it. can use all of them. So I'm not sure if it's in the um, Android store, but all you have to do, we'll show you on here real quick, we'll go down to here, is in the App Store, you literally just look up <clears throat> Etcher Laser. It's right there. And download it. And what I love about it is it truly is really easy to connect. So the first thing we're going to do in order to have it connect and work on your phone, we're going to show you this, is you do have to zoom out so they can see this. <laughs> the number one thing is you do have to unhook your cable from your computer. If you have it hooked in, it will not let you use the app. So we're going to turn it on. Go ahead and just lay it right on, the, on there. Okay, I'm just... trying to get it to go. Yeah. There we go. I'll zoom in. So basically... Sean's going to zoom in. There we go. Okay. Let me close out some stuff here so we can go into it directly. Okay. So the first thing is, is it's disconnected. So we have to get it connected. And you do that by going into settings. And it will say, make sure you are connected. So if you go to the connection guide, it will say, turn on your Etcher laser. And then it says, make sure to scan a QR code. So let me show you that. <clears throat> Hold on. So in the back of the machine, Sean's going to show you here. In the back of the machine, there is a little QR code. You literally take your phone and you hit scan QR code and you just literally take a picture. That's all. And you hit OK. It will say, are you sure this is what you want to join? And you'll hit yep. It takes a few seconds. And then once you've done that and scanned it, it will say you're good to connect. There's the machine then. Click on the machine. Voila. Now we're connected. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. And then really it's the exact same thing. It is, we're going to start a project. Here is our... That's your workspace. Workspace. Basically. And it's exactly like it was on the last time. So you come over here. We can... Um, Let's see, what do we, you can uh, change your origin. So this is where it takes it and puts it back up here. You also have where you can um, capture, you can add stuff. If we hit capture, uh, this is the capture height surface. So enter the height of the surface. So we know it's going to be three. Oops. We can then, of course, add our stuff. So we're just going to add something again from library. Just to make it easy, we'll bring in, let's add from the assets, let's do a snowflake this time. So there's our snowflake. We can move that around. So just like we have to do on the desktop, we're going to open this up. Sean will zoom out as much as he can.
Okay, so once I'm here, we do, we have to take a picture of it open because the camera is actually right here. So it's taking a picture down this way, right? So all we need to do is come into the app over here. There's a camera. Do you see the camera? And it says capture. So we're going to hit enter and it's going to take a picture. Now we can bring this down. And so now you can see, we'll have Sean zoom in there. Mm -hmm. It took a picture. Here we go. So I'm gonna move this to where the, it's not hitting the ghost. It might overlap the ghost just a little. You so can make it smaller too. Oh yeah, I guess I could. Use the arrow. There we go. So then once we're there, we just come up to here. We have an origin and then basically we hit start. It's going to say it's gonna take 20 seconds. You hit start. And then the difference is, zoom out, mm -hmm. when using the app, you actually control it from the machine. You don't control it from the uh, actual desktop. So basically, we have a green light. So once we hit go on this, it's going to start. So we're going to press and hold. And now it's going to go ahead and start. And red obviously means that it's cutting. Don't move it. Takes 20 seconds. Really quiet, no smell really too much. Uh, it, it's so minimal it'll be like, it, it's less than maybe a cigarette would be. Yeah. Like. It's so light. So once it's done, both the lights go out. And there it is again. So that took 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. So you can see though, this is really light. Like you can't even feel the difference, but that's how you do the app. So the app really does mimic uh, the desktop, which is really nice. I'm going to turn off the machine here really quick so we can answer some more questions. Right. I know there's quite a few. Um, and then we'll do some more elaborate. So today's overview is really just kind of the basics and what are our thoughts compared to the Glowforge and stuff. Um, and then we'll do more with this machine. Um, so what questions next? Looking for the next one. Can you do this onto fabric? Absolutely. It talks about leather, other fabric, fabrics. Fabric, yeah. yeah. Denim. Oh, yes. So basically, the thing to remind yourself on this is it can do a lot of the same things that the Glowforge can do. It's just going to take longer because it's going to take more passes and stuff. We're going to show etching because etching is a little different on this too. Um, but let's go ahead and... Hello, Mr. Crafty Pants. How are you? Yes. George is saying you think this is better than the Glowforge. Depending on what you you yourself are looking for as a laser cutter edger, the laser, this one here is only 3.5 watts compared to a 40 watts. So you can see that the Glowforge can do thicker, faster, um, one-time cut instead of multi-pass. But then again, is that what you want to do? Like if you go out and look at some of the videos they have, it shows you like the one that, that we the video that we showed you it did a piece of leather um it probably was a high wattage and you probably only saw the last couple seconds of it it was probably a couple passes to get to that point was that etching it looked like it was etching i don't think it was a scoring line um so you just have to play with stuff Would, or look at whatever so everybody else is doing i and for me you think this is better than a Glowforge? We use our Glowforge for mass producing of stuff. So for example, we're gonna cut a ton of different things with it. So the, the things that I lean towards a Glowforge is the bigger cutting area. So you are very restricted to the space of this machine where the Glowforge, you get a true 19 by five by 11 and a half. Now, this does give you the option so, actually, let me go ahead. Let me just look um, I can lift it straight up. Yeah, like go ahead and lift it straight up. So, this does give you the option to do a pass through. So, this actually will come out and it will expose the bottom. And what this means, and I'm going to share my desktop here with you. Um, the, the thing that I do like about this is they give you the option to buy something called um, a pedestal. So let's share our desktop and I'm going to go to all products and you can see we have a pedestal. So this 
is it's a $200 add-on and this is the pedestal. And what this allows you to do is actually remove the bottom from the machine. And why would you want to remove the bottom, Sean? This way you could actually do bigger items, maybe just the surface of an item, but it's too big to put on here. So you just basically can get it and you move it, move it and you place it yeah. right on top of that surface and you can do that. Yeah. So like the Glowforge has a pass through and, and stuff, this allows you to move it. Now I will tell you at that point, the laser is not contained within here and it's very important. You wear your Glasses goggles. are going to be extremely yeah. important then. And stuff like that. Um, but they do give you that. They also give you the option of purchasing a air filter. So if you want to, they do have this particle filter and an exhaust fan. Now, in my opinion, I we haven't done a ton of like cutting and stuff with it, but there hasn't been a ton of smoke or flames or anything like that. Um, so out of the gate, I would say that this is basically half the price of the entry level Glowforge. So the entry level Glowforge is right around three thousand. This is, I think, fifteen, thirteen hundred, eleven hundred, eleven hundred. So just know that if you're going this option, you are going to have a little bit more of a manual uh, setting of this. Now, manual setting can be good and bad. It can be good because manual setting really does give the user flexibility because you're inputting in the thickness of the material. You're um, removing the bottom out of this. Where the Glowforge doesn't give us as much control for that, it is a little bit more safety first and that where this gives us a little bit more freedom on that but the one thing i'm not a huge fan of is the one thing that i've loved about cricket machines and the latest silhouette machine and the glowforge is it has things built in so the glowforge we buy most of our material from glowforge it has a qr code and the reason i love that is the camera takes a picture of the qr code and it knows all of the settings yep. it knows the speed it knows how many you know, um, if it needs to do multiple passes, which most of the time it doesn't, it has everything there. Now, if we were to buy a material at Home Depot or anywhere else, we would have to figure out those settings or tool around with it. This one, you're gonna mostly do that out of the gate. It does have a few settings in it. So let's share the desktop so I can show those settings with you again. So will you go to this little guy and go to preset? This will tell you a lot about what this machine is geared towards. Here's the preset setting. So let's go to acrylic first. Sure. And it's gonna tell you acrylic black and three millimeter cut. So engrave or cut. Yep. So if you hit cut, what are the settings it gives it? Just out of curiosity. So speed is 200, power's at full 100%, and it's going to take eight, eight passes. passes. Where the Glowforge would do that in one pass. One pass. And I don't know what the other settings yeah. are. I can look at but, but yeah. look at, it, then it has paper. So copy your paper. And what is that settings? A 1,000 speed, 100%, one time. So this is copy your paper, and it is 100 power. Yeah. 100 power on the Glowforge would start that on fire. Yeah, so 100% meaning 3.5. Now, on the Glowforge, I could really bring my thing down a lot. Some of the industrial ones that do those, they do it due to speed. It can go so fast that it doesn't have time to um, burn. Mm -hmm. um, balsa, we basically, ours is between 2 and 3, but just to cut it, apply it. So a speed, I would have to bring that all the way down to 450 and two times cut to do a balsa wood. Which we have balsa, so we'll try that here next. Yeah. But And then veneer. Veneer. To, to cut a veneer, 400, 106 passes. So veneer is a lot harder uh, depending on what type of veneer. Veneer could be walnut, uh, mm -hmm. ash. It could be all kinds of stuff. So you just don't know. Yeah. So... um. Before we do a cut, I, I want to explain that to you. So basically, this is a machine that is the big key on here that I didn't even get. When I opened this machine, I said, I have no idea. Because Sean says, what is it? And I said, it's this. And I go, and it's 3.5 watt. And he went, oh. And I was like, what is that? Oh, I mean, and he was like, that's why. That's, he yeah. goes, it's it's can do it. It's it just not it. using as much power. It can do it, but it's going to take a lot longer to do. So a great... Example for my crafty friends out there is the Cricut Explore Air had 3,000 grams of force, where the Cricut Maker three, had... 
Three hundred. Sorry, three hundred. And the cricket maker had four thousand. So, so it just had more power. Mm. That's the same thing between this and the Glowforge. This machine can do it. It's just going to take more oomph. So the other thing I want to show you guys is how they do engraving. So let's show you that before we answer one more question. So let's go back to the desktop. Mm -hmm. So the engraving is a little different and you guys um, are in more control of the kind of engrave. So what I mean by that is go into the little ghost and we're going to go into manual and we're, or sorry, go into presets, just fine. Go into presets for me and hit veneer engrave and hit apply. Okay, so now when we go into our settings here, it's going to ask how, what engrave you want. So basically what type of engrave is it? So there is going to be something okay. here that you're gonna see right here, hatch. Hatch is basically how is it going to um, do the engraving. So what I mean by that is, let me show you on the little sample piece they gave me. Let's see if Sean can zoom in here so I can show you. So on the Glowforge, when it engraves, it's doing a true engraving. So it's going to engrave basically, I don't even know if I have a Glowforge engraving. Let me go look. I'll be right back. So I'm going to zoom in even more. See, see if it'll even zoom in that much. Ooh, stop it. So you can see that is a cross hatch or, or um, it's a both vertical and horizontal hatching. Now, normally when you go through the Glowforge and you do um, an engrave, it's literally cutting um, 0.01 millimeters each time it moves. So it's going to burn all the way through. So you won't get a, hat, a hatch. You can make that same effect like the Glowforge uh, by telling you, telling it when you get into that program, um, how many, how many uh, pass or not number of passes, but how many uh, millimeter line hatch do you want? You would want like 0 0.01 or 0 0.5 and it can do that. Then this way it'll literally move 0 0.05 millimeters every single time it does that, it'll burn. So here's a here's an example of a Glowforge etch. Might go out of focus, but just by tilting it, you can see that there's a depth to this. This is actually cutting pretty far into it, probably a half a millimeter in depth. <laughs> Excuse me. This came off the pepper. <laughs> That's pepper in there. Woo. So that's about a half a millimeter or so in depth. So it's literally cut, etching it into the wood itself. And that's what that's creating. This is like somebody was calling a kiss. You can't feel it at all. It's just enough of a burn to give you that cross hatch. Yes. Um, a quick question from Diamond here. If you really actually want to cut it, do you have to protect the bottom? No. The laser cannot cut that metal at all. No. Yeah. So this, here's the deal. The Glowforge, if you go into Glowforge user groups, you'll see people say, truly do not lo lo leave your Glowforge. And we experienced that where we painted something, we put protective paper, and it's so powerful, and there was so much... Um, the suction to get the smoke out was so much, it was taking our placement tape, lifting it up, and catching it on fire. So I can see where the Glowforge could easily catch on fire because of how much power it has. This, we didn't experience that at all because it just doesn't have that great power. Um, so I'm going to show you really quick uh, what an in actual engraving looks like, or yeah, the engrave. So yeah. I'm going to turn it on here, I'm going to plug it back into the computer. Oh, I guess I can use your phone. And Diamond's asking, does it cut, when it cuts acrylic, does it leave a smooth edge? It does. It, uh, anytime you cut acrylic with a laser, it's always gonna be that smooth edge. It does not, it melts it, and it's a clean as can be. What's the thickest material you can cut? We don't know. It doesn't really say. The more passes, the deeper you can go, basically, at full power. Oh, 
All right, so let's do... Can you really etch a design on a laptop without hurting your laptop? Absolutely, because when it's etching a laptop or a phone, it's anything that's iodine, uh, di uh, let me think of the right word, anodized aluminum, which are all the apples and I think even other ones, it is so, so minute of an etch in depth that yeah, it cannot, it can't hurt it. And we were going to be, we will be doing showing that on our Glowforge on an old iPad that we don't use anymore. And we even have a phone that we don't even use anymore uh, to show you that it can be done. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how we do <clears throat> a quick engraving. So I'm gonna plug this into our computer and share my desktop. I already have a piece of wood in there. Oh, you do? Yeah, do we, we just need, need, we need to retake it and stuff, but. Uh, and this is that thin stuff, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna need the Okay, the so. Jig. So here is our setting. So I'm going to add an item and we're just going to from catalog and they have actually shape engrave and product. So we're going to do engrave and let's engrave the ghost this time. And I'm going to hit import. Now here it is. And now you're going to see we have hatching. You have the different styles so we can do up and down, left and right, the dot pattern. Which one do you want to do? Um, your name was done in the crosshatch, the X, X style. Yep. Okay. And then how many do you want to do per millimeter? Uh, this is how, that's the distance, I guess. So 0.5 uh, is good. We'll leave it at 0.5 and we'll show you the difference. Perfect. Okay. So we have it here. So now we do need to capture it though. So the door is open, and limit you, switch here. Can you put it in position so I can yep. come over here? So we have to uh, put it in its origin position. Which are, it's right there. there we go. And now Sean is going to adjust the laser. So we're going to hit position and bring the laser above our material. So it's going to move it. And what Sean is doing right now, let me see if you guys can see it. Probably not. Um, uh, here, I can go to the remote cam. Oh, okay. Okay, so basically what he, we did is we moved the laser above the wood and he's now going to measure it. So I'm just going to loosen up these two screws here. Just enough so it'll slide. That one we'll do first. This one's got a bigger nut on it. There we go. I'm just going to hold it so it doesn't fall. Lift it up. Place the jig underneath it. Bring it straight down until it touches the surface. And now I'm done. And tighten it. Tighten it. it. Tighten. And it's, it'll smooth right out of there. There you go. Now we're at the right height. Now it knows the distance. Yes. Where the Glowforge takes a picture of it and yes. can do it. So now that we know the distance, we need to go back to our origin. We're going to hit origin. And now we need to take a picture. So it's going to take a picture of the wood and where everything's at. So we're going to hit capture. What is the distance? Oh, this is the same as this. this I would say this is like probably 1.5 1, 1. or maybe 2. Let me find out. I'll just do 2. It'll be fine. I'll double check it. All right. So we're going to hit OK. It's taking a picture of it. And now we have it exactly where we want it. We can go back to origin, make sure our lasers. Yeah, it's pretty close. And we're going to shut this. And now we are ready to start. Now it is already telling us that um, it is seven minutes and 30 seconds to complete this, which we can answer questions. So, um, and you can see our settings here is speed is 6,000, 10 power, and 50 hatching. So do we want to increase that? I would increase power quite a bit. I would increase power to probably, well, let's do 90% just to see what it does. 95, sure. I don't care either one. Okay. So now we can hit start. So basically it is, let me zoom out here. So right now it is going back and forth and engraving it. And it's going to take about seven minutes. So while it's doing that, we'll answer any other questions yeah. you guys have. Sorry if we missed it, because uh, I know there's probably... Safety first. Safety first. I'll be back. How long have we been using the machine? We got, we got it. Less than 24 hours. Less than 24 hours. Uh, Jessica, right now we're using, I believe, a... Is this a basswood again? I forget which one you're using. This is um, crickets, uh, balsa wood. Balsa wood. 
Yeah, this is their balsa wood. Are you wood. going to cut? Yeah, we'll do a cut. We'll just I can tell it. it's Cricut's balsa wood because there's tape on it that kept it taped. So this is uh, two millimeter balsa wood. Yeah, have you cut anything all the way through it? Not yet. We'll do that here in a moment. Where's the price? The 3.5 watt is uh, about 1100 I think it's 13 I saw a 1.0, so... Let me look. Like 1.0 and I Loose pieces that come up will jam the machine. Well, nothing's really going to bounce up. Oh, you're right. $1,049. There you go. After taxes and all that stuff. Hurry, there's only eight left in stock according to their website. This what? That's a thing. Like, in reality, you should still probably always vent out regardless. Absolutely. We're doing such minimal here that, I, like I said, there is more smoke with a, with a wood-burning tool than this is right now. A match has more smoke than the, this yes. thing is making right now. But you should always vent out anyway. If we vented out, we would have had to remove our Glowforge's venting, and we didn't want to do that. Are you comparing this to the Glowforge Basics? Here's the deal. It's really hard to compare this to the Glowforge, because the Glowforge, it's just a much powerful... It's way... I mean, it's this is... Three and a half watts, and the Glowforge is forty watts. So it wouldn't be fair to this machine to say, "Oh, the Glowforge wins," because it has way more power on the Glowforge. Um, this is more, I think, ideal for someone that has less space. They're just doing little items, maybe um, pieces to put. Like, I love to create wood elements on my cards and scrapbook pages, but I've never been able to cut wood quickly. This would be that. This would also be someone that, you know, like when kids get their wood engraving kit and they make different stuff, this is kind of what I would compare it almost, to, right? Almost, Smaller yeah. projects, not as big sure. and thick. Ian says, is it easy to focus? The laser I use is a pain to focus. I think with the jig that you are given, that is the focus point. Yep. It's it's because you already have what the length is. Oh, now it's going the other way. Um, so the distance from the laser uh, point to the project that's the laser that's the focus point and that's yep. why they made a jig where so on the, the glowforge it actually has a focus point and you have to set it so basically if you don't set the focus point on a glowforge it just randomly picks a spot of your wood or material and it does it but you can actually go in and say i want to set focus here where this what the difference is on this is you're actually manually moving it from the origin to the position you're going to have the laser cut so you'll see us go from origin to positioning the laser, then you measure it, and then you put it back. So you're manually doing it. So there's no focusing per se because you're manually mm -hmm. doing it that exactly. whole time. So if it cuts leather, does it? Um, oops, trying to get that to come up. If it cuts leather, does it leave burn marks on the areas it cuts? Um, we've never done leather. I don't know. I haven't even done leather on the Glowforge yet. Uh, we've done faux leather, and it. Did not. I don't think it, it left very little. It doesn't leave a burn. It leaves a smoke. Don't and do I, faux leather. It's don't dangerous. do faux leather unless it is very dangerous. Unless it's been approved to be what is it? A something. I don't use it because I got so many. It's got to so be many. free of the chemicals that faux leather is made of. It. What is the thickest material it can cut? We don't know. I think the more it does, look. Yeah, Fatima, do not cut faux leather. And again, if you cut acrylic, it will be smooth. It's because you're melting it. The laser melts it, so yes. Is this more of a home crafter one to kind of use? It, Carol, it kind of is. Um, it all just depends. Believe me, I, when we, we're going to try doing a cut when this is done just to see what it does, especially with this very thin piece of wood I got. Can an etch fall out of it? If you can't cut it, you can't etch it either. All because of the chemicals that are used in making faux leather, it will, it could cause problems. That's why they say don't do it. Unless you can find stuff that doesn't have those chemicals in it. Um, measurements and uh, the nice thing, Carol, break out your computer, put in the, and go to Google. You go like, most of our stuff is one eighth. You go one eighth. So what is the Question maximum millimeters? It'll tell you. Maximum material thickness for laser cutting. It depends on the type of wood, but the 3.5 watts is 2.5 millimeters, so 0.1 inch by repeated processing. For thicker materials, can take anywhere between 8 to 15 passes. So there you go. It will not cut metal. 
No, um, um, the uh, Glowforge will not cut leather either. It's not powerful enough. You have to get up into the 100 watts and higher so to cut asks, metal. Can it cut thick uh, acrylic? So the, the Glowforge can cut thick acrylic. So acrylic from the Glowforge is either one eighth of an inch or a quarter. fourth of an inch, a quarter. This one will not cut anything up to a quarter. So the Glowforge can cut that thicker stuff. This cannot. This is going to be either that one eighth of an inch um, and definitely not thick uh, in, uh, acrylic. All right, so let's bring this out and show you what it looks like. Oh, look at that cute little ghost. So you can see where the Glowforge, when it does an etch, when it, there it goes. See, it's it's a way more. It's a cross. It's a it's a horizontal and a vertical, so it's a cross hatch. Where this is going back and forth. That's the one you will not do up and down. Just mm -hmm. Back and forth. Yeah, that's what this now, one does. Now I can do this with this by setting the correct parameters, which what? is I can do this. Like oh, that, yes, yes, yes. This, but you have to change the parameters. So what he means by that is if you want it, this is the crosshatch. It can do just this, but basically you're going to make them a lot closer and close mm -hmm. that gap. Yep. But I mean, it's that's cute. The question, the question is, why do you have to have a picture? Even the Glowforge, you need to have a picture so you know where you are where your image so is. The big difference is the Glowforge um, the camera is built in kind of with the, it's built into the lid. So when you open your Glowforge like this and close it, the camera's already centered and it's taking a picture of the entire bed. This here is different. The camera is actually right here. And that's why you have to take a picture of it with it open. And it is relying on these squares around the perimeter that look like this. We can go to the remote camera quick. So it's relying on this to see where the placement is. So in here, you'll see those little squares. So when you put a material, you cannot cover those. Yeah. These have to be visible. Seen. They have to be so, visible. Because when it takes a picture, here's the camera up here. When it takes a picture, it's taking a picture of this bed. So the difference is on a Glowforge is the camera's already built into the lid right here. So when you close the Glowforge, the camera's always in the center and it takes a picture of the whole bed. This one is taking it at an angle. Yeah, if you're if this um, laser head is not in its origin mode, it covers this one up, and, and it will camera, say no. The camera go. can't see it, so it doesn't know where everything's at. All right, so let's try to cut something while you go here. I'll go in the system. System. Yep. No, so, I'll help you out with that. So, what questions? How much? Well, we already said it was eleven fifty. You said it does cut paper too. It does, but we've never done it yet. You'd have to probably tape paper down because even though there's a small fan, there's enough probably to move it if you don't have it at least taped down. I don't even know if that's magnetic. Okay, so I'm going to no. turn it on so I can do all of the steps we need. Okay. Thanks, Shani. So the first thing we're going to do is open the lid. Or actually, first we have to go back to the origin. So this is what's moving the... Uh, the laser. Once we have it as an origin, we can actually lift it up. And then why won't it let me take a picture? Oh, we have to position it first. Yes. Position. Position. We turn it off again. Yeah. I think we might have an error. Oh, we don't have a plug. Oh, you do. Is it all the way in? No, it's connected. It says it's connected. Oh, yeah. Go and turn it on. All right. So it's connected. We have. We're going to make it go back to the origin. You want to do this so you can see this? Okay. Because they want to see it cut, right? Right. You want to cut that? I guess not. With your passive aggressiveness. <laughs> I was just asking. 
I thought you wanted to just find something simple. To me, that was simple, but oh. okay. Sean wants to do simple, so you guys get a circle. I was going to get fancy, but that's too much for Sean. What do you think? Uh, down to about 450. Okay, so now what oh, he's... Oh, no, I won't go that because it's thin. I'll do... So what he's doing is, this is the part that I'm not so excited about is you kind of have to mess with the parameters. So we're going to have it as a speed of Sean's thing 450. Well, that was th thicker stuff. That was three mil. So I'm going to go a little power. So he's going to do 650 speed, power at 100. Yeah, it doesn't have to go as slow because it's not as thick. Yeah. So we'll, we'll try some And then other. how many times do you want we'll to do go? Four, we'll try four Kay. times. So go ahead and hit start. Start this baby. It says it'll take two minutes. So Sean will show you some... Where are you going? Oh, you're going to do that camera? Mm -hmm. I can go over there. So I think you can... I think you can see a little better. So now remember, it is only at three watts. So this is why you're not seeing, like on a Glowforge at the full wattage, you would see flings and smoke and... This is just going to basically do the pass four times. So this is number two. Number two. Sorry for the quality, bad, bad Wi-Fi. Which is still weird. My mo my my router is like twenty feet from me. <laughs> it's very weird. Okay, it's coming up on pass number three. Now, once we're done and we take it out, we'll see if four was enough. So when I come in here, it smells just like a kid's wood burning kit. Like yeah. you know, you would get and you would burn wood and. I mean, I don't even see smoke in here. There's none, but There's you can no smell the wood burning. Yeah. Like, you can. It reminds me of the wood burning. It does. So it should do one more pass, I think. Yeah, you're at, at 67%. 67%. So one more pass. <clears throat> do you think it went all the way through? I, I think it should. I mean, I could be wrong. I don't know. I'm guessing. Remember when the cricket couldn't make a perfect circle? <laughs> All right. Okay, let's... Moment of truth, people. Moment of truth here. Ta da! See, and it did leave behind a mark with that. that comes they right said up. it's normal. That's totally normal. And they said just use a. Um, they said, what was it? Water or a baby wipe? Yeah, so it's very possible that this could have been done in three instead of two instead of four. I don't know. Again, it's new. We've never done anything before that, but it and did it cut said, it. And it said, don't let that work because it will do this. Because here's the deal the, the Glowforge has what they call a cum tray, yeah. and the crumb tray. Um, you can't burn it and the little pieces come through. So they said basically start with water and then you can grab a Mr. Sometimes 50-50 uh, uh, white vinegar and yeah, uh, water but it should, They said just use any kind of... Go, I would go left and right because of the way the gro oh. grooves are. Oh, look at you. You're so smart, Shawnee. Yeah, this is just a dry... Um, one of those dry erase board type things. Like, yeah, like a Mr... Mr. Race or whatever they call it. Mr. So, Clean. Mr. Clean. So that's how it would cut. And it does. It doesn't have as much of the burn edges. Do you want to go up to us again? Um, it doesn't have as much burn edges because it's not as Sean had said powerful. So basically the, the thing is, is 
It, it can, I mean, it can cut wood and acrylic. It's just going to take a little longer, yeah, it's right? It's going to take a little longer. All it right. does cut paper, yeah. So what uh, questions before we end, since we were at... We've already talked about that. Uh, if you buy the Sur Filter Girth... Go... So I think what you're asking, Fatima, is um, the Glowforge, you have the option to buy their compact air filter. Um, we have opted never to buy that because we have not heard the best reviews about it. So we always vent out a window. But if um, you had the compact air filter on the Glowforge, you do not have to vent it out a window. It would get vented into there. Yeah. So Jean, uh, Jen says you have to have a fiber laser to cut metal versus CO2 laser. If you have a high enough wattage of a CO2 laser, like 100, 130, it can cut some metals and not all. But yes, to cut the like stainless steel, you definitely have to have a fiber laser to cut metal, uh, the, the really crazy stuff. Uh, it should, it say, doesn't need to be exhausted. You should exhaust outside. You should, we, we knew we weren't going to be making much or doing much with it. So that's why we didn't have one, but it would be definitely, uh, want to make sure you have it. That would it cut a 12 inch circle? No, because the max height is only 10 inches. Yeah. So you can only do, well, technically you could pop out the bottom couldn't you and just move it and line it up uh, i you think could. so i think it's possible. it wouldn't it would be multiple steps you bet jack thank you if you purchase that uh no fault to me. once you buy the actual filter you do not need to vent it everything goes into that filter and stays there there was a gal one of our actually she was one of our first person that bought one she bought that because she lived in an apartment and she cannot vent outside. Yeah. So, but um, we even, Miss Amanda had well, has that one. Yep. She has that thing. Yeah. Um, so a lot of people were asking about what would you um, use this machine for if you have the Glowforge. For me, this machine would be for very, very quick small items so if i needed to quickly do um a small circle or something uh i the one thing i'm not how do i say this it does fine it just is going to take more time and i am not a patient person so the glowforge the nice thing i like about it the the pros for the glowforge is it is a little bit more um intuitive when it comes to figuring stuff out for you they were brilliant in creating the QR code that takes a photo of it and knows all the settings. You have a much bigger workspace so you can get more out of it and it's faster. To cut um, something on the Glowforge, even thick material is really, really quick. Mm -hmm. um, so that's definitely the pros. The cons of the Glowforge is number one, price. It is expensive. Number two, it's heavy. It is big. This is 20 pounds, 22 pounds. Um, it's overall footprint on this I is... Think Marina actually already put... Um, oh, did she? Yeah. Where the Glowforge is... Here's those dimensions. Much, Thanks. much larger. Much larger. Um, and the other thing on the Glowforge is uh, it is for sure a more powerful laser. Yeah. When I first got the Glowforge, I was scared of it because I was like, holy moly, this is powerful and there is a few times when sean didn't understand the power of the glowforge and he literally went to, to etch something and it almost went through the entire wood and he was like holy moly Ooh. this is powerful yeah. where this is a little bit more safer when it comes yeah. to that how often does a laser need to be replaced since this is this is not a co2 laser because you would actually see a, a laser tube and everything like the glowforge i do not know what type of laser this is so i'm not sure i can tell how you. often i do not know hopefully not very much uh oh she's barking this machine carries a 445 NML laser diode class one laser. Oh, a diode. It, so it is a, a 445 nanometer laser diode. So there's a diode. So there, the diode meaning there's like a, a like a crystal in there. I've worked with some of those type. I used a, a KTP laser, which is a potassium something type laser. Haven't you? Did you or did you not rip up our carpet today? Good idea, Pam. Uh, good question, Pam. She says, what's the price range for materials uh, for the Glowforge? 
you can actually go online and actually see what their prices are for their so for proof their grade for their proof grade um what they call mdf basically uh for the thinnest one it's four dollars a sheet and that's 19 and a half by 11 uh for acrylic it's four to six dollars so you can see it their proof grade material does go fairly quick though because it's very popular because once again it has the qr code mm -hmm. takes a picture of it knows all the settings we usually only buy glowforge um proof grade material because of that um but it's it's not expensive at all no it's not too bad yeah uh, as you get into the more exotics woods and stuff, that's when it starts going up in price and stuff. Um, oh, good. I'm not the only one scared of my glow for <laughs> I was scared of it. So when Sean first was, got uh, it, Charlotte. I was like, I'm not playing with this. And he was like, why? And I go, it's a laser. Didn't you watch Austin Powers? He was going to put <laughs> lasers laser. on shark and kill you. <laughs> and I'm not as scared of it. The only part that scares me is you truly do want to stay with that machine because there has been stories of people leaving their machine and it catching on fire. There are, there are pictures. It's scary and it's to because see what it's because it's so powerful and the exhaust fan on it is powerful that it creates things lift in there so paper or stuff like that and it can catch on fire. Um, so that's a little scary. So I, we always stay with our machine when we're cutting it. Yeah. Um, but as you get to use it more, it's I get way more at ease. Um, Betsy says, so if you don't have the QR code, how do you know the depth and type of wood? You don't you, you don't. have to figure it out and either keep a it's like it, it back to the original you. cricket days where you were like okay i think paper dial is this and speed is this and you know force is this so it's the same kind of thing now i will say the majority of stuff is pretty equal so for example their uh their medium uh draft which is what we use for it's one eighth of an inch so Sean will look at something and say, well, that's about one eighth of an inch. We'll just use that. And he'll always do a test cut on a little smaller piece. But we bought like an olive wood one time that we thought, oh, this will be fine. It barely made a scratch on it. Yeah. So, so it is a lot of guesswork. Guesswork. And even on this machine, it's going to be guesswork. And then you can just save it. Once you find that setting, right. you save it as one of your settings. Um, and that's the nice thing about Glowforge. They have a fantastic community blog uh, forms and everything that uh, it's called beyond the manual yep. and you can people will go in and say okay i've tested this wood and this wood for this is perfect at these settings and you so, can manually put going and that's what it is it, it, it literally is called beyond the manual and there's all these uh tech technology geeks that basically have done it and they say even to the point of at home depot this wood is going to be these settings mm -hmm. but even then we've had settings and it doesn't turn out because we needed to calibrate it so that's one thing you don't have to do on this machine there is no calibration there is no laser alignment so the glowforge you do need it to align because what it's doing is it's going to sometimes you can engrave and then cut. You cannot do that with this machine. That's going to be two separate projects. Where in the Glowforge, you can say, I want to engrave and then I want it to cut. But in order to do that with the Glowforge, you have to do a print alignment, which basically means we're going to make sure that the laser's alignment of the camera is what it sees. So that way we can't, because mm -hmm. if you don't do that, we've done it where we've actually done all the engraving and then it goes and cuts and it's way, way off. off. Where this, you wouldn't do that because it would be two separate processes. Yeah, one of the nice things, too, is that, um, I wouldn't say it was nice. I think when you're working and you do everything really correct, you can sit there and go, 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 and eventually it'll get itself out a little bit. And you can tell because when it's done doing a cut and, or whatever, it takes a picture afterwards. You can see mm -hmm. if it's off. If it looks like it's starting to go off, don't do your next one. Reset it and yep. redo that. And the other thing is, if you ever go and you put something in there and you accidentally hit the uh, uh, the carriage bar or anything like that, it's best to go back and reset yeah. it again. Turn it off, let it do its thing, reset it. So, and here's the deal on the Glowforge. The one thing that I will say that I love about the Glowforge is the Glowforge was in Kickstarter, then it was funded, but it has a very large following and it has a lot of people that have tested the machine. Mm -hmm. Nothing against this machine. This machine has hit the market. But if you were to go look at stuff on this machine, videos, how to, there's not a lot on this machine. So you really are at entry level. The Glowforge has lots of groups. There is a lot of community. So the one thing that I was very thankful for is I got our Glowforge after the fact that a lot of people had tested it. And the majority of the issues we've had with the Glowforge have been solved in the Beyond the Manual. 
So it was actually in the Beyond the Manual that we found out, oh, our carriage is off. And the reason it's off is Sean had cleaned it and he didn't tighten um, this mechanism enough. And there was just a little bit of a leg. But that little bit of a leg made the entire cut off. And had it not been for Beyond the Manual of people saying, hey, this is the situation I ran into. Here's what fixed it. Um, we would still be running into issues. So the community in the Glowforge, I really feel like you're buying that community as well. You're you're buying that experience with it and stuff. So as it sits right now, and it's very hard for me to say this over that, I would definitely save money towards Glowforge. But I'm also still to this point saying if you can get even the Glowforge Pro, I would do that because you're just getting that much more options. So in my opinion, it's better to save longer to get that machine that is way more than you probably need because once you get a laser machine, believe me, we're the same way. Once we got it and got comfortable, it was us saying, I wish we could do this now. I wish we could do this. And that's when we got the pro. So that's the reason we bought both of them was because we wanted it. So so Robin asks, is it hard to recalibrate the Glowforge? Nope. Very simple. You it's just, just time consuming. If you, if, what I'm saying is that if you hit it, just bump it by accident oh. with a piece, you turn it off, and all it's really doing it's recentering. It's recentering. It, it just needs to know the where the print alignment takes the time because it, what it does is it literally goes and and etches scores a whole bunch of the Glowforge logo, and then it takes a photo of it and shows you, and it should line up perfectly. And mm -hmm. if it doesn't, then you make adjustments. Yep. So it's not hard. It just takes, it takes time. I have five. Cricket machines, I'm still afraid of them. <laughs> what would you use with, what wood would you use with this machine? So basically you could use any material up to 2.5 millimeters. Just know that it might take multiple passes to do it. Yep. Anything harder makes, anything that's hardwood, hickory, ash, walnut, stuff like that, multi, much more passes yeah. to cut. Even to, even to um, etch, you, it, it needs more power and more. Yep. More passive. So we will still um, do stuff with this. I think this is a great crafter type yeah. basis of if you want to make earrings or you want to do quick little projects and stuff. Mm -hmm. The one thing I'm not excited about is I like on my Glowforge and the software, you're able to score, etch, and cut all in one project. So for example, when we made this, this required us to cut, score, and engrave, and we could do that in one project. This, you're not gonna be able to do that. You're either going to um, cut it, you're going to engrave it, you can technically score it by just not doing multiple cuts to cut it. Um, so I wouldn't say that. Software-wise, this software is super easy to use. Mm -hmm. There is a little bit more room for error because you're doing a lot of the manual measurement, um, but I would say it is a little less intimidating than the Glowforge when it comes to yeah. using it the first time because it's not very loud. There's not a lot of smoke. Yeah. There's not fire that I saw. Um, so, I mean, it's a great entry level. I still think, in my opinion, not that it's a bad machine. I think I'm at a level where I want more from a laser cutter. Sure. So for me, it would make sense to wait a little bit and, mm -hmm. and get the Glowforge. Yeah. I mean, if we were ever to move into the heavy duty so much cutting and etching and stuff maybe going up to getting a industrial which is huge and much more powerful and much more expensive and much more expensive way but, more expensive yeah it, you don't yeah. even want to talk about how much but so i mean it, it could, you it do could get to those spaces because there's certain people that i know that i'm like did you have a glowforge and they said i did until it couldn't handle what i wanted to do no. so when you get to a point where you're cutting like, for example, 651 or 143, geez, 143 vinyl, they cut their own blanks. They have industrial laser machines that are like $50,000 yeah. that do it faster and more power and, and quicker. It's, and its working bed is four feet by three feet. Yeah. So it's huge. So it's just a matter of upgrading and stuff. So this would be like a definitely a, an intro to mm -hmm. laser cutting if you want to get your feet wet and sure. the Glowforge. I'm glad we went to Glowforge at the beginning. So good question, Jen. Yes. So basically, um, you can create any software you want to create SVG files, and then you can upload those SVG files into their software. Yep. So the actual software, I would say, compared Glowforge compared to their software is pretty much the same. It's a very 
um, basic. The Glowforge recently has added a uh, beta testing where they allow you to add shapes and offsets and all this stuff. Um, but this here is from a file that was an SVG file I created that says October 31. So that was just an SVG file I brought into their software and had it score. So you can bring any SVGs in, resize it, move it, do all that stuff. So, so yeah. But I hope you guys enjoyed this quick review. Don't forget tomorrow we'll be back on this channel. I don't know what time Sean has to go buy his ingredients, but tomorrow is Sean's first official Cooking with Sean show. And he's making... Here? You are. And what are you making? I'm making Tex-Mex soup. I can because it's so... This 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 uh, recipe is so easy. So good. It's so good. It's delicious. yummy. So yummy. if you are not, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon so you get alerts. And as always, we will always have the replay back up so you guys can always watch the replay. Mm -hmm. I want to thank Smart DIY for sending us to yes, have a you. first look. Um, we will continue to use this machine, fine-tune our skills on it, and utilize it so that way... Um, if some of you are interested in this machine, we'll show it off more and answer your questions, or you can reach out to us at always. So I know, right? He needs a freeze dryer so I can make my Skittles. So, well, thank you guys so much for joining us and we will see you tomorrow. Bye everyone. Bye everybody.